sorry, my computer's spazzing. My computer's spazzing. I can't tell what you can hear and what you can't. Um, where we left off was, uh, I, I kind of rushed through it a little bit, so I'm just going to go back over it a little bit. Basically, um, first off, what we said was that uh, the amount that B is pulling on A, that means that uh, the ground has to be pulling on B that same amount. So that way, A isn't pulling B away from the ground, right? The ground has to be pulling B back. Hopefully that makes sense. And likewise, um, since E is pushing A and B, then E has to push back against the ground with the sum of the those two components, which that's what we figured out right here. We figured out that the EG is what? Um, 22.66. And then uh, one final thing that we did was uh, we said, okay, for B, there's no vertical components. So there's nothing pushing this up or down, really. But here, this, uh, this E is getting pushed down somewhat by this AE force right here. So since E is getting pushed down, it has to be um, kind of like resisting upwards, right? Um, so that's kind of like... If you have, if this is nailed into the wall here, this is like a nail right here, nailed into the wall, and you're pushing up, or uh, uh, rather, you're you're pushing down on it. It's exerting an upward force, so that way uh, you don't just slide it through the wall. So uh, I kind of skipped along that. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Also, um, what I pointed out, and this is actually a nice shortcut. There's a couple nice shortcuts uh, that I can show you here. Is since this is pushing in, is uh, or rather, it's pulling against the ground, it's pulling on the ground, um, with, we said, where's my mouse? Ah, uh, crap, there it is. Okay, since uh, this is pulling on the ground, BE, uh, where's our BE? Do I not have a BE? I know I put a BE in here somewhere. Um... Or B, BG, sorry, BG. So, uh, B is pulling on the ground with 22.66 unit force, right? So if this is pulling on it, in order for it not to be moving in some direction, this has to pull with the same amount. Since there's only two, one's got to cancel the other out. So that GE is also 22.66. And then here, you can say, okay, since the whole structure, the whole whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, since the whole thing is being pushed down with a total of 12, 7 plus 5, right, 12 uh, units of force, well then, something here that's actually attached to the wall has to be pulling it back up, or, or pushing it back up, or pulling it back up with the same 12 units of force. And since the B is doing absolutely nothing, that means that E has to um, pull that 12 newtons of force. So actually, if you look at it, uh, B is holding up zero weight, right? It's holding this A from going this way, but all of the actual 12 newtons of force is pushing this E down the wall, so it has to resist in that upwards direction. So um, that's where we got those numbers from. Um, why is my computer being so slow, by the way? I mean, this is ridiculous. It's like, maybe it's because maybe it's of first class, because first class is stupid and ugly. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's like, my computer is being really slow considering it's only running paint. Uh, paint and hypercam, too. Anyway, uh, we're going to do a little bit of torque analysis. And this sounds kind of ugly and yucky, but it's really not too bad, which uh, hopefully I'll show you. Um, so now we're going to say that in place of E, we're going to have this... Uh, this axle right here. So we're going to say that maybe the whole thing can wants to rotate around this axle. So uh, what's happening? Well, um, maybe the one thing that you learned uh, on like a seesaw or whatever is that if you try to push really close to the edge of the seesaw, it's not going to do much damage. It's not going to push the other person very far. You have to push really hard. Whereas if you push way towards the end of the seesaw, that's the whole cherry bomb effect. You, uh, you can push the other person faster, right? Uh, and what it turns out to be is that um, the force that you're applying, so it's here, uh, 5, times the distance that you're applying it, like the distance away that you're applying it, gives you the torque. That's the, uh, that's the equation there. 
and it turns out that's actually a kind of work, but we're not gonna we're not gonna get into that. Um, so basically, uh, it's really not as hard as it as it can be made to seem. Uh, so we said way back in the beginning that the length of this bit was four and the length of this bit was four, right? So um, for d right here, uh, we have what force? Well, we've got um, sorry, um, we've got oh, and um, and by the way, it's uh, only perpendicular forces, right? Because uh, if you're pu if you're pushing like say this way, and this is the axle right here, if you're sort of pulling on the seesaw, it's not going to turn the seesaw any, right? There's not going to be any torque in the seesaw, so it's perpen it's whatever's perpendicular. You figure if you push, uh, if you have um, get a little lever here. If you have this lever, let me get some wood in there. If you have this lever, then uh, pushing down here, down like that, is going to be more effective than, for example, pushing straight down is going to be more effective than maybe pushing at some diagonal, because you're putting more force directly on the surface. That's all that is right there. Uh, okay. So hopefully that makes sense where I got that from. Whoops. Delete. Uh, okay. So what do I, what do I go by doing next? Uh, force is distance, force times the distance, right? So, for example, here with D, the force is 7 newtons, right? Or, uh, 7 units of force, whatever units we're using. So we've got 7 times, how far away from the point is it? Well, it's 4 units away, right? So times 4 equals, we get 28. So, this is, uh, working in 28, it, it's measured in joules, but we're just going to say again, units of, uh, of torque. So pushing down with 7 newtons on this D point uh, puts 28 units of torque around this uh, point. And then likewise here at C, uh, we've got five. the force is 5 times... Now the first thing you might want to do is say, oh, look, there's a 4 here, so it's 5 times 4, but that's not quite it. Because remember, it's this from E to D plus from D to C. So this is C is actually 8 away from E, right? Because it's rotating around E. So it's actually 5 times 8. Hopefully that made sense too. If not, let me know. Uh, so 5 times 8 equals 40. If you add them together, 28 plus 60... I'm sorry, plus 40 equals 68. Uh, so that's 68 in what direction? Well, you can say it's kind of like in this... Uh, let me make it yellow in like this counterclockwise direction, right? Uh, hopefully that's a good enough arrow for y'all. Um, because you figure if this is like a clock hand and you're pushing or pulling down on the... and th if this is the clock hand and this is the whole axle that's spinning around and you're pushing down right here, it's going to be spinning it counterclockwise, right? Um, so maybe I should make that like uh, this greenish color. What color is that? Is that, uh... What color is that? Is that, like... Hmm. I'm gonna have to name that color. Aquamarine, maybe. Uh, so you would imagine by pushing down here, it's gonna rotate it counterclockwise. So what's rotating it clockwise? Well, that's B, actually. B is the only force going clockwise. Because you, if you imagine now that this is the axle and this brown bit right here is the hand, well, then pushing this way is going to make it go clockwise. And guess what? Unless the structure is spinning, unless it's actually rotating, obviously they cancel out. So uh, we know that this clockwise bit is going to be 68, but I'm going to show you why in a sec. Um, okay, so another thing that we kind of knew from the very beginning was... Uh, that this bit right here was 3, this height. If you don't believe me, go back to the first video. I mentioned that this is that this height is 3, the height of it is 3. Um, so again, we're just going to use our force times our distance, right? So our force B, we're, uh, B to the ground, BG, that's 22.66, so 22.66.
that's our force, right, our force, times how far away it is, well, it's three uh, units, so to speak, away, whatever units we're measuring in. So it's three away, so we end up with, well, let's take our, out our handy-dandy calculator, and it, my computer is being slow for a reason I'll never understand. Oh, may, wait, maybe it's because I'm using half a gigabyte of RAM. Who knows? Anyway, so we're doing 22.66 times 3, and we get 67.98. So, 67.98. Now, do you see a similarity between 67.98 and 68? Yes. This is 68. This is just a rounding thing, right? Because uh, if you remember when we got 22.66, we actually got 22.66. Six 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 six, and uh, a whole bunch of sixes, tons of sixes. So then that times three, we get something that's really, 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 really close to sixty-eight. So basically, these are equal. Oops. Uh, so you'll see these are equal. It's just rounding kind of gave us that little tiny, tiny decimal away, but it should, it should make sense, right? That uh. The, these forces are turning counterclockwise, are, ma are making this whole structure want to turn counterclockwise, and this is turning it clockwise the same amount, so that way it doesn't move at all. So, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully that made sense. That's really all torque is. Torque is the force that you're applying, um, like perpendicular, times the distance away that you're applying it. So, if I have an axle here, and I have a wooden block there that's wood, that's brown it's secretly brown, you just can't tell because I'm hiding it from you it's a secret, but it is brown because that's a wooden axle then uh, say I apply this force right here at that angle well then what I have to do is I would have to figure out, okay what part of it is going along this, this direction that's perpendicular to the uh, um, to the wooden axle piece or whatever. So I take that, whatever force is perpendicular, and then I multiply it times however far away it is. And then I get how much torque is being applied. And in a stationary system, or in a system that's not turning, that's not moving, they're going to cancel out. And actually, this is one kind of useful way of checking your work, right? To make sure that, uh, you didn't, that you got all the right numbers. Because if you got all the right numbers, then these will cancel out. If you solve the truss wrong, and if you ended up with the wrong value for this arrow, well then, these two won't be equal. So that's actually one way of knowing whether or not you got the right answer. Uh, you probably won't use it to check your work, because it's, it's uh, kind of annoying, but it, uh, it actually isn't that bad. I mean, all we did was 7 times 4 plus 5 times 40. Okay, that's 68. And then 3 times our 22.66, we ended up getting basically 68. So, they worked out, so I know that I did my work correctly. Hopefully that helped. Um, I think that the, o the only thing that's going to be on a quiz is a simple triangular truss, but I know that on the test, he's going to give us some kind of, um, some kind of other truss to deal with. Uh, possibly something like this. So, uh, I hope this prepares you. Um, and I really hope that working through these trusses has overall given you a better understanding of just how to approach them. Because uh, that's really what I'm aiming for here. I don't want to give you an answer. I want to give you the method because we're going to be... Apparently we do these things for like a month. So I really, really want you guys to understand it. So let me know how everything's working out, okay? Uh, I'm probably going to make my next video regarding work and energy and physics, but uh, I'll see you then.